My name's Jeannie. I absolutely love art, I love teaching and I love seeing the spark in people's eyes when they can do something they don't think they can do and when you can teach them a new skill. Most people go through life having some problem with something like art because somewhere along the line they've been told they can't and uh, that they're no good at art or no good with whatever the thing is. I think that most people can do anything if they really want to and if they've got a good teacher. So, my belief is that, and so far it's proved itself many times over. I've worked with young and old, rich and poor, from all states of life, and amongst that I've also worked with things like UK sport, British uh, basketball, the Olympic coaches, the charities, stroke victims, many, many different people. Throughout all of it, it's all about the yes we can and yes it's possible. Now, when I teach, I'm a great believer that the primary problem we have with learning to do art is that we don't really know how to look. Now, it sounds crazy and we think we look all the time, but in fact, we constantly filter what we see by what we expect to see. My daughter actually looks very, very much like me. But one of the problems with that is that when I look at her, I see defects and faults in her that I don't like in myself. So it's very hard for me to paint her accurately because I know her too well. And also it's a very good rule of art in general that you will look at any picture more clearly if you look at it as with the F's in reverse. So with this painting of my daughter, to make it as accurate as it is, I painted the entire picture upside down with the photograph also upside down. So by changing my perspective, I came away from dealing with my own personal issues and only dealt with the painting itself. Now interestingly enough, there are some other methods that are quite good for explaining that and that are interesting maybe for you to try yourself. There's a very small little picture here, a line drawing of a child. Now you could use this, or you could use any cartoon from any newspaper. If you're right-handed, you would place the picture, the cartoon, to your right, and underneath it, you place a white sheet of paper. Then with your right hand, to your right side of your body, you draw the image the right way up. That image will be whatever you've pre-decided it will be. So if you've decided you're no good at art, it will be a poor picture. If you think you're good, it will be good. When you've done that, if you then turn this picture upside down and now place it to your left, you then place a white sheet of paper underneath it and this time, if you possibly can, you draw with your opposite hand, with your left hand and draw the image now upside down as you're looking at it on your left side. The interesting thing again will be when you bring the pictures back to the right direction, you'll realise that the picture you've just drawn when you broke all your normal rules, drew with your wrong hand and the wrong way up, will probably be the best sketch you've ever done in your life. Right, now I'd like to introduce you to Michael. Um, I first met Michael at Browns at Covent Garden where I was speaking. And I was explaining that I taught art to anybody and that I could get anybody to achieve amazing results very, very quickly. And Michael decided to take up the challenge. So maybe if I throw it over to you. Thank you. I mean, for, for me, I'd, I'd always done challenges every year, but a lot of those have been around physical things, climbing Kilimanjaro, motorbiking around. But here was something I'd never done before and I'd been pretty poor at school. Uh, so for someone to tell me I could produce art, I wanted to hear and see it. So anyway, Michael and I decided quite soon afterwards to meet up for an art session. The art session, the first one, started the same way that I always start with everyone. And I always go through, first of all, a series of sort of optical illusions and things like that, like the F thing that I just demonstrated. And there are many more to it. And they prove how we actually fail to use our senses to their height, particularly our sense of vision. We endlessly think we're looking, but in fact, as you now know, we're not. So the primary focus of the first lesson, the beginning of it at least, is to prove to the person taking the lesson that they're not really looking. And I think you found that was very much the case. Yeah, I think by, by turning upside down any particular vision or photograph, 
that gets you to look at your horizon and everything inside that in a very different way and you pick up things that you just hadn't seen before. So that was a great introduction. And then after that we went on to some sketching. We did some sketch work, which is a lovely way of building up your confidence in what you see and how to translate it. And then on this occasion, um, we then went on to do a small painting. Now in this, Michael's taught a number of different brush stroke techniques and how to apply different things like, say, cotton buds to get the clouds, which is an unusual idea, but saying that often the most simple tools are the most effective. We get stuck in a rut thinking you have to do things a certain way because at school you were taught that way, whereas in fact anything's possible. So with this painting here, I remember Michael going away extremely proud of himself. And I think it's a beautiful little picture for the first time out. And as I said, that was by the end of three hours. I mean, what were your comments about this one? But again, I was delighted just to, to walk away after three hours with something that uh, appeared uh, creative. But also when I took it home, I, I just said I bought it in a charity shop and uh, I just wanted to check people's views first before I said it was mine. Um, and everyone thought that was a great picture, so then I owned up it was my first picture. Uh, so that went down rather well. Can I borrow that one just for a moment? Now, on the first lesson, we actually spent a lot of time here discussing reflections. And you'll notice there are two small people here that are reflected in the water and the sand. And here the waves and things are reflected. So the following lesson, that was a few weeks later, we got together and spent another three hours. And on that occasion, we did some more on the optical illusions and how art and life are actually quite linked. We also went on to some sketching, but then we concluded on that occasion with this painting. Now in this painting, we continued the whole theme of reflections, but took it even further. And also went in far more strongly to bringing in a source of light and a direction of light and aspects like this. Now with this painting, the step forward again was quite dramatic, and that's what always seems to happen with students is once the confidence comes, and once they're actually looking carefully, they really start to excel quickly. Now, Michael, what were your thoughts on this one? Again, for me, this was now building up confidence and confidence, and you know, starting to push that boundary, uh, where I was starting to discover skills that I didn't believe were there. Um, and this was really the next stage of demonstrating that I could achieve something that I didn't think was possible. So I think you'd agree Michael did very well to this point. Now this is when we really turned the corner, so if we could just pop those two down for a moment. And the following time we met for three hours, Michael started doing some sketch work of Rachel, his then fiance, And he wanted for, to understand how to make a really good portrait of her. So to do that, first of all we sketched to get used to the lines, the movements, how to translate her into a line. Then we took it into a small painting, which isn't here today, and in that occasion the entire painting was painted upside down to make Michael really look beyond his expectations. And then the following session when we got together was actually a much longer one because we decided we'd be together for as long as it took to actually do the final portrait. So we met up, and I think we spent maybe six or seven hours together on that occasion. And it was a great fun event, a lot of laughter and hilarity, as well as a lot of long silences and lots of concentration as well. But would you like to show this picture? And here you'll see Michael really then had the confidence built. He was getting so self-assured it was unbelievable and really just soared. It was such an easy process. It's just obviously the time involved because there's so much to it. And what were your thoughts and views on this one? Uh, for me, this, uh, when it was finished, um, just gave a, a wow factor for me and a huge sense of achievement and kind of released that spirit of hope of doing further things and certainly it's encouraged me to take a wider view on all aspects of life where I begin to believe that you can achieve what you want to achieve and this is a small step on this way and I have to say done with very intuitive and discerning teaching, done with fun, uh, done with inspiring methods it was done in a way it didn't feel overwrought or cumbersome um, and actually was a pleasure to do. Now as they say, the proof is in the pudding or the proof is by seeing is believing. So I think what we need to do here is actually bring Rachel in and then you'll be able to see for yourself if you think we've got a good life like this. So my wife, Rachel. I think to sum up, that I really believe that sometimes in life today we don't look at the bigger picture. 
We look at things in such minuscule detail and we rush to criticise. One of the best things I was ever taught when I was teacher training was if you need to put red ink across someone's work or criticise them, firstly, you should look at your ability to teach. People always look for the mistakes. We forget that there's so many beautiful and wonderful things out there, so many things to enjoy. Back in a native village, Everybody sang, everybody danced, everybody did art, and everyone has the right to, and I like giving everyone the permission to. Now, in life, there are so many things that we hold back from, but in fact, I hope that through art, I'm showing you that you can actually take a risk with everything, and if you do, it's amazing what you can succeed at. When I do the event, The Bigger Picture, and I've been working with the sportsmen and things, working with groups of up to 100 at places like the Emirates Stadium, I've had everyone doing small bits of what ends up to be a bigger picture and they can't believe it because I'll lead them astray in every way I can thinking it's abstract art, many other things, by taking away the fear factor. And once that's gone, people are amazed what they can do. They're thrilled with their work and then at the end when they realise that it's actually a minor component of a massive picture, I've watched grown men reduced to tears. They just can't believe that something they believed that was beyond their capabilities is suddenly so easy. Now, there was one lady I worked with recently. She was 65. And by the end of a two-hour lesson, she'd produced this. She'd done no art whatsoever since she was 16 years old. And at the end of the lesson, she was weeping opposite me, asking who'd drawn the picture. Well, as the picture is of me, which I hope you can tell, it certainly wasn't me that drew it. And she just couldn't believe it. The husband, when he arrived, was the same. And to be honest, I think anyone can do that. In my life, probably the most dramatic event to prove to me what I could do was being taught to tightrope walk without a pole, without a harness, in three hours. And again, I had the desire, which is what you need first of all. Then I had a very good teacher. And to be honest, the most crucial element was then letting go of all my old beliefs and fears and actually letting myself free and on that cable believing I was safe. And when I believed I was, I was. And with art, the same. When you start trusting your abilities, it all happens. It's about empowerment. It's about using the creative side of your brain. It's about taking risks and landing on a soft, squishy marshmallow that's safe and not being frightened of the future, and not being frightened of failure. So I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of what I do. And if you haven't gathered, I love what I do, because I love watching the sparkle in people's eyes when they get it.